Hi everyone, welcome back to Quick Resume episode 44. You've joined us today on some pretty lo-fi vibes. So here we are, Tim's being an absolute trooper over here for you, and we're sitting through a storm, so really, you know, that like button is begging for a click. <laughs> um, but yeah, how are we doing, Tim? Um, <clears throat> yeah, I'm doing all right. I'm still sick. Um, <laughs> I, I'm, I just, I feel, I just get sick. Like I don't get sick often, but when I do, it's just, <clears throat> it's just a domino effect. It's like deathbed. Um, yeah, but like, I mean, to be fair, anyone who's watched the podcast for as long as we've been doing it, I have been sick quite a lot in the last like year or two. But I think that's just. I don't know. I think it's just every, like it's just everyone. I think feel like everyone's immune systems are crap over the last few years because of COVID and everyone's staying inside and all that kind of crap. Yeah. Um, but you've you especially had a baby, been around babies more often, haven't you? Yeah, you know, exactly. It's just like little bio weapons. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a lot of them. My, my tiny little nephew does bring back so much stuff. It's um, crazy. I think probably literally like the last like ten times I've been ill, it's just been because of him. Um, yeah. So yeah, and uh, yeah, I just haven't been able to shake this one. I've just gone through so many different stages, and now I'm just hitting like this sort of like cold, uh, sort of like bunged up coffee stage, um, and yeah, just sort of low energy. I, I literally haven't solidly played a video game for like two weeks as well. I know like, I haven't seen you in ages because it just hurts my brain to stare at a screen too long. Every time uh, I see I you like... online, you're on YouTube, probably watching a 4K fireplace. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like... Yeah, well, I've actually found this this YouTuber I quite liked recently, and he does kind of like long, long like playthrough videos. Yeah. Um, but he's 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 quite funny as well, and uh, I just put those on. They're sort of like 45 to an hour a piece, That's and good. most of the time I just drift off to them or I just watch them. They're they're pr- they're pretty chill sort of thing. Give them a shout um, out. You know we're a big deal. <laughs> we've, we've got to run. We've got to make yeah. these indie channels really popular. I mean, this guy. No, he has like nine hundred k subs. <laughs> yeah, we're like, just kidding. Um, Maybe he can return yeah. a favor. <clears throat> well, for anyone who does want to know, his name's like Indie Mouse. Um, I mean, I but know. like Mouse, That's a wicked like name M-A- though. M A U S E or something like that. That's how Mouse is spelled. Mouse. Yeah. Um, joking, but yeah, he, he, he is. He is pretty funny. He is pretty good. Um, good and yeah <coughs> so i've kind of just been doing that and getting through it but as long as i'm healthy for elden ring that's 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 what that's what the end goal is really that's the end game yeah that is important definitely important it's actually quite funny i remember seeing on talk like or his reddit i guess like a few weeks back there were some people on there like is anybody else genuinely scared they're gonna die before Elden ring comes out <laughs> yeah i remember seeing that yeah yeah <laughs> and i remember i can't say i feel the same right now but i remember having felt the same like when monster hunter world was coming out i remember being like if i die if some like tragedy befalls me before Monster Hunter comes out, I'm going to be a phantom and I'm going to haunt everyone. Yeah. I actually remember us having that conversation. Yeah. We just Did like, we? I hope we don't. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I hope we don't fucking like die Perish. before uh, mainline Monster Hunter comes out on Xbox. That we've been waiting for for like 10 plus years and asking so for. Annoying. Um, but yeah. Yeah. So I'm kind of just powering through it. Um, <clears throat> and uh, hopefully, hopefully I'll be good to play some actual games this week. I I'll be so a gamer. Man. On my gaming podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. Yeah. yeah. We, um, I, well, I, I, yeah, I mean, I guess while we're on the topic of Elden Ring, I was just um, showing that to, to Beth this morning. Because there was like a, there was like a, a gameplay overview trailer that went out this morning. No, yesterday, maybe late last night. Yeah. I think it was. I don't know. Have yeah. you, did you see it? It's like six minutes long or something. Like <coughs> yeah. It's like a six minute long and um, boy. PlayStation one, I think. That yeah. was a good trailer. It came out. I saw it everywhere. It was on the Bandai Namco channel and the Xbox channel. Oh, okay. um, but mm. that was a bloody good. Um, got me excited. <laughs> oh, mate! Every single piece of gameplay and extended sort of preview I've seen has got me so excited for that game. Yeah, yeah, Looks yeah. So so good. Beth was like, "Oh wow, that was amazing." Do you think I could play it? I was like, "Oh." Well, uh... they have said, they have come out and said that they have. They, they, they want to retain the Souls like difficulty sort of level, but they said this is the sort of the most 
enterable one, you know, for like someone just starting out or something. Yeah, more like accessible. That, you know, new new universe, new everything. You know, you don't have to play the previous Dark Souls or anything. Yeah, and, you know, they have said that it's not. Obviously, there's still they said it's still hard and there's still some bullshit in there, but. Um, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I mean, considering Beth's RPG experience is basically just like Breath of the Wild, maybe maybe not. She played. Um, oh, she did do Skyrim, Skyrim, and Horizon as well, and Horizon. Yeah, she's yeah. a big girl. I mean, girl does Horizon Graduate. Horizon does that have like a difficulty setting when you build up the game? Like easy. Uh, hard? I think it does. Um, I don't know what she was on. I think she was on easy. I think there's five. There's like story, easy, normal, hard, and very hard. I think. I yeah. can't remember. Um. But yeah, Horizon's a hard game, man. I played that on normal, and it wasn't yeah. quite easy by any means. Yeah. That's what um, I was about to say. Yeah, she probably played it on the easy because I remember, I remember both my brothers saying it was really difficult, and they were just playing on like normal. Yeah, so, that's right. Yeah. yeah, nice. It's um, it's good stuff, and of course, it's um, it's Oscar season at the moment. Um, the shortlist has been nominated, and that means this household goes into <laughs> an Oscar frenzy. Um, so I've been watching some of those nominations. I watched the. Uh, no Time to Die, the James Bond, and Belfast was another nomination. Yeah, it was good. I enjoyed it. Um, some of the writing was still a bit weird, but it was, it was good. I liked it. The villain was garbage. <clears throat> Rami yeah. Malek did not get any enough screen time or any time to actually develop a, a convincing villain. Yeah, and I don't, things, I don't even know. Was the last one Spectre? Mm. What was the last one? I think the last one was Spectre, yeah. I don't think I've seen Spectre. Um, Because it was Skyfall before that, that. wasn't it? Yeah. Skyfall, like, I think. Anyway, I feel feel like there was one I hadn't seen because I was like, I knew Rami Malek was um, a villain in one of them, so I I was surprised. Is this his second appearance? No, no, no. Rami Malek, he's never been in another Bond movie. This was his first appearance, was it? This was oh, his right. first appearance. He was a brand new villain. Here, yeah. I, I hadn't. Well, yeah, in that case, yeah. Like, <clears throat> definitely, there's some weirdness going on there. Yeah, but so that's been happening. Um, and I've just been slamming Sekiro, really. Um, mm. Other than that. Um, but, and you know, I've been having such a good time and I've, I'm really wanting to get this off my chest. So things are about to get heated. Things are about to get emotional. <laughs> um, oh god! I've been I've been having a great time. Like it's been nearly flawless. You know, like all from games, they're like you know, all nine out of ten experiences. There's like some occasional bullshit where I'm like that actually feels a bit unfair, so I'm going to dock a point. Um, and like I said last week, sometimes I feel like from games have a real problem with signposting, where it's like you're not being moody and ambiguous. You're just like I don't know. You're not communicating with me like what I'm meant to do. Um, yeah. And I so I'm like right at the end of the game and the game like like gives you a decision or a choice or whatever and and it's just such like a souls thing and there's no real like indication of like what that choice means um or what is like good or bad so I was like surely you know this can't be a big deal whatever I'll just do that because you know that's been mentioned before in the game so I did that it turns out that's because I had to look afterwards I looked online it turns out that's the mm-hmm. bad choice it's irreversible. It cuts out the last act of the game and you have to do a triple boss fight at the end. And I'm going oh. through this boss fight at the end and I'm like, it's re- it's really hard. It's like stupid hard. It's probably doable, but I'm just like, I'm just demotivated. I'm like, I didn't want this. I yeah. I, I, I literally, because I went online and people were like, don't pick that choice on your first playthrough. Like, because you gimp yeah. yourself for the next playthroughs and you don't experience like the foot, like, because it's like a full final third end of the game, which just gets cut short. The game just ends now. So it's I'm really like, weird. I don't know if I can... I don't actually know if I can be bothered to do that. Like, there's no way to reverse it because now every time I spawn, which is so weird because like I can, I spawn at the shrine and go to trigger the event every time, but it just plays the last line of dialogue as if I had just picked that decision. So I don't know why it won't just let me go back into the overworld and do something to like change my decision. It's just like, why? (laughs) It's just like unnecessarily. It's not like hard or like a get good. It's just like, I feel like I've been tricked and that's it. Yeah, that's that's kind of that's kind of a bit of bullshit to be honest. Um, especially like you said, once you pick it and you sort of just, you know, you're curious to find out what the other option was, and then you yeah. find out that the other option was more game and the correct yeah. way, 
yeah, I can see why that's completely demotivated you because you're just thinking like, why do I bother? You know, I'm having yeah. to do this massive slog of a triple boss fight for something that so I, I don't want. I don't want this yeah, ending. <laughs> something I don't want. Yeah, that, it's really weird. They should have definitely um, ironed that out, especially if you're playing on like a Game of the Year edition, you know, that's come out. You would have thought they'd patch something like that in that you yeah. can choose and you're not just locked in. But souls, I guess. Yeah, it's just really bummed me out because like I was having such a good time, especially as I came towards like the last like 10 hours of gameplay I had have been like nearly flawless. It's been like occasional like silly like combat designs from like some of the bosses where I'm like some that's just like the hitboxes are won- wonky and stuff like that. But mm. like quite minuscule compared to that, the like you know, the it, it's been so enjoyable. Um and it's just like it's really just left a sour taste in my mouth where I'm like, oh I just comp. Oh, <laughs> so not because like I, I would have I like, if I really wanted to, um like it, they people say like if you want to go and do the you know, the actual decision that you didn't make or the other decision, you know, you'd have to go through New Game Plus. And I'm like, yeah. well, no, maybe like there is enough energy like to go and do that. But because like it's such a stacked boss fight um, and there's, I've had, a f- I've had that a few too many times, I think in Sekiro where there's like a few too many times they pull that, oh, there's another boss. Oh, there's yeah. a second health bar card. Um, but it's like, it's fun one or two times and, you know, it leaves like a really memorable impression on you. But in, sec- in this Sekiro, they've done it like, six seven eight times and it's like you kill a boss and you expect something to happen and them to come back and it's like yeah um yeah, it's, it's it's a little bit weird because i mean previous dark souls have done that but they didn't quite abuse it no. um they did it i think in dark souls 3 i think they did it maybe twice but like sure the boss like evolved as you did its health and it started getting like angrier and changing its move set but didn't like die and come back or just completely change into something new, you know, with an entirely new health bar. I think that maybe happened twice in Dark Souls 3. Um, exactly. That's why it was so memorable because it yeah, was quite scarce. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah, man, it's just a real shame because I've like, I, it's been really, really good, but it's just really left a bit of taste in my mouth. And I'm like, I, I don't I honestly don't know if I'm going to finish it because I'm now just considering like, I want to play like Cyberpunk, the upgrades come out. I'm like, maybe I'm just going to move on to that. Like I've had a good time. Um, I probably would have given it a nine before, but now I'm like, maybe like 8.5 you know whatever numbers but that's it's just ultimately how i feel um yeah as it's come towards the end um but i would still totally recommend it to everyone it's it's a really excellent and it's a really nice um i, I think i said last week it's, it's like a nice palate cleanser uh compared to other souls games it, it like it's a bit more focused it's like i don't want to say story driven because it's still a souls game and it still is weird but it, it has just a, it's just a bit more lean i think and, and focus yeah. um yeah but yeah nice bloody bloody um and other than that um i've just played a little bit of dying light this week and i played a bit of big team battle as well with some of our friends. oh no yeah. way you yeah. actually got people on we That's got crazy. yeah i managed to rope <laughs> i managed to rope for a few couple of people in um and we had like maybe seven or eight games and only one game <laughs> like died <laughs> one game died we tried to get in, but the rest of it was absolutely fine um oh nice and it was yeah it was it was nice to play i was like wow i forgot about these maps and you know just the chaos that comes about in big team battle you know when you have like two or three man long long swings around the side of the map to make a play and and you get to shout with your whole team for doing nothing you know just sit at the back of the map with stalker rifles and yeah just the good yeah. stuff that comes with big team battle but yeah that was that was really fun oh nice yeah, yeah. i'm kind of Kind of sad I missed that in my comatose state. But, uh, <laughs> hey-ho. Worry. Yeah, well, I'm sure there'll be more. I, th- I think the Tenrai event's coming back next week, so I'll probably hop on for that because I want to finish that off. So maybe we can do a little bit yeah. then. If I'm going to play a bit of Halo, yeah, it have to be before Friday. So That's true. Yeah. I probably yeah. There, there is there is some more Halo news today. They they um, spoke about some of the what's due to come up in, in the mid you know that what they called the big february update and they deal to detailed what would be in that and it's um a little bit underwhelming but uh but we'll go around to that um cool i mean so is there anything else you wanted to sort of check in on before we move into some of the <laughs> some of the festivities for the week uh no not really i've had oh. a very boring very boring <laughs> week <day. laughs> oh. rub it in <laughs> yeah okay um all right well we get to start we get to start off the show with um 
Nintendo being fucking weird. Whoa. Nintendo being Nintendo. Um, so they just out of nowhere put up a tweet uh, this week and just said, as of uh, March 2023, it will no longer be possible to make Nintendo eShop purchases on the Wii U and the 3DS. Why? Why? Yeah. It's a bit of shit, right? But this Why? is a very similar thing to what Sony did with their Vita, wasn't it? Um, yeah, that's right. Why should they reverse in the end? There, yeah, yeah. I was about to say there was some there was some fight back on it. Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah. Okay. So there was some reverse. Yeah, it's just I don't know. It's just kind of weird. Like I I I get that you know you have to pay for these platforms to be up and all the transaction fees and stuff like that costs money for Nintendo. But I don't know. 3ds kind of makes a little bit of sense. But I don't, I don't think the Wii U should be phased out quite yet for for digital purchases. I don't feel like that console is that. I feel like some people probably still have Wii U's, you know. But mm. I guess they just want the Switch to be the be all end all, right? They do, and I think like that's, yeah, I don't know. But because like I guess like my angle personally, like I have a new three. I think we both have a new three DS, the XL, don't we? Yeah. And I got that, and I didn't yeah. like. I pl- I probably used it for like maybe you know, 70, 80 hours for whatever the, the Monster Hunter was. Generations. Uh, it was Generations, yeah. Yeah, the one before, which was four, wasn't it? Um, but I didn't, like, get that much use out of it. And I know, like, I, I've, I always know, like, in my head that there's, like, a big library of games on the 3DS that are really good, but I just never... For me, it was, like, pretty much, like, exclusively a Monster Hunter machine. Um, and... Yeah. Like in my head, I was always like, I have that that I can use, or I could like give it to someone else, or you know whatever, and they'd be able to use it like you know it's brand new because it's it's really in a really good condition, and it just like it 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 it's kind of hard to believe that in one year's time I actually won't be able to buy games on it. Like I'll be able to buy physical games, but presumably they're going to stop producing like physical copies by then as well. So it's like yeah. I'm actually going to have to like fight, like do you know I'm going to have to like pay it's extra, cost and it's like. Up. And it's just like it just yeah. it's it's like marking the beginning of the end for like this is like just why though like I guess I understand stop making like producing physical cartridge cartridges but I don't understand like shutting down digital stores I just don't get that yeah especially when they're so fucking N- Nintendo is just all nostalgia like it's so weird this because she's so anti Nintendo I mean yeah. they're even like incorporating games from the fucking 1980s inside new subscriptions and stuff like that and they're like you can play this digitally you know on your vm and it's just like well (laughs) then why are you keeping the other older stuff what you want to keep old old but you don't want to keep old like i don't understand yeah where do you draw the line it's just they can set it's because they know that they can sell it back in the future like they have a history of doing that don't they like they'll shut down all the stores and then they'll make like um like Monster Hunter Generations remastered on the Switch, do you know? I, or like, yeah. um, what was the other? What was the really? Because I have this on my 3DS. So I bought it physically. The um, the Zelda game uh, where there was like low rule and high rule. Um, oh, a link between and you could worlds. go. That's the one. Yeah, link between worlds. I was like, that was received really well. Like that's gonna get like 2024. Fucking write it in your diaries. That's gonna get ported to Switch. <laughs> Oh yeah, and it's gonna be like Absolutely. a full price game, um, like a remaster or whatever. And it's just like it's just so cheeky, and I don't, you know, I understand there must be some maintenance costs to keeping these, to keeping the eShop. Or, or I guess you have to renew the licenses as well. Like I understand there must be yeah. some maintenance costs, but it just, you know, it it just feels like, and like there has been a big backlash to this. A lot of people have said, you know, that there's games there that like can't be bought anywhere else like that were either like never made physically or like you know the, the physical production is all but ceased and it's like they're just yeah. going to be lost now like forever like you know relics in time exactly relics in time like tears and rain yeah so yeah. it's just nintendo things uh and it, it really sucks it's really annoying because i get ugh, it's yeah this is why it's important that we do <laughs> give a, a good amount of support to Xbox's programs and stuff like this. And even with PlayStation, they went back on their decision for now. Like, I understand at some point stuff has to close down, probably, you know, unless you're Xbox and you're really committed to keeping all of these channels open. Um, but, you know, it, it, it still feels a bit too soon. Yeah. Yeah. I Especially agree. as we're moving yeah, into I mean, a digital age, you know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's so much less 
maintenance than than producing them physically you know i can make yeah. if they came out we're like we're stopping making these physically i'll be like okay that makes sense but the whole digital aspect like i don't know yeah it's just weird we, we, we had the we had the same sort of thoughts on when sony did it with the ps vita as well it's just like why take away uh anyone's ability to purchase this art you know that somebody's made that people have put a lot of work into and stuff like that it's just i don't know yeah Somebody looking at a spreadsheet of numbers for too long, really. Yeah, that's all that's it is. Yeah, that's what it strikes they're me just as. crunching the numbers. Yeah, and they're like, "Well, um, yes, you're probably right. It probably would shave off some costs here and there, but like, you you lose a lot, like you know, philosophically, and you lose a lot to the industry and to history. And it's just, I just don't feel like it's worth that cost. But it's not my money, so you know. Yeah, exactly. Which is exactly what Sony did. It was numbers on a spreadsheet, and then they made the announcement, and then everyone went in uproar, and they're actually like. Okay, well, maybe it's not just numbers on a spreadsheet, guys. Yeah. <laughs> you know, maybe it is a little bit more than that, you know. Um, I, hopefully the same thing happens here because it's basically a copy and paste of what happened with the Vita, wasn't it? So Yeah, that's right. Um, hopefully the community sort of fights back because, yeah, you don't like to see this stuff just get buried and just become non-existent. I don't know, man. I haven't seen nearly the same backlash to this it's just nintendo fans are just something else they're on a short leash <laughs> they are on a yeah. short leash <laughs> it's weird isn't it yeah yeah it's like they're afraid to bite back i don't understand it yeah i don't know you you all know you're gonna get an 18th mario like that's gonna happen regardless don't worry about it yeah yeah, okay. Well, that does it for kind of the honourable mentions. That's kind of it for this week, uh, just Nintendo. So in, in terms of the news, it's been a bit scattershot. Um, but we'll start with, really, uh, that the Halo TV series has already been renewed for a second season with Paramount+. Plus. <laughs> Hopefully it doesn't suck. <laughs> oh, okay, so it's already got a season two. I mean, yeah. you'd like to think that's... A good sign. That's a good sign, you know, because they, they, do, they do show these things to people early and they do sort of i don't know if i focus group it sort of thing so obviously the results came back quite positive enough to renew it for a second season so yeah cool so supposedly it has um a, like i mean obviously I, I don't know what metrics they use to make these decisions so early but supposedly a big part of that is whether the right like demographics are reacting like you know if they feel like they've narrowed down and there's you know the right um it's vibing with the right sort of people that they wanted to vibe with and they're like yep yeah, vibe it for the second season because if it's going to continue being successful with them then um that 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 bodes well for us and like our catalog and what we have in our catalog um mm. so yeah i mean hopefully hopefully it's a sign of good things to come um and i i guess you know while we're on the halo tv topic um you'll see at the bottom of the note uh there was some news that um master chief's gonna take off his helmet at some point in the halo series whoa whoa pretty big stuff and i think you know it's worth clarifying before people are upset about this if you don't know already the halo tv series is like not canon well it's not not canon but it's its own universe i think what do they call it they call it like the silver thread or something you know or silver or whatever it is so it's, it's like its own it's like the halo cinematic universe you know it's not the same as so so yeah I think this is like that really doesn't phase me as long as it's like important and it's not done just for no reason. You know, even canon yeah. chief has been seen with his helmet off. You know, the Halo Four legendary ending, you see his little his eyes and his like white face, and he's seen as a kid without his helmet off. Um, so as long as it's done like you know respectfully or like in a way that makes yeah. sense, uh, tastefully, yeah, he doesn't just yeah, take tastefully. it off and just be like Fuck smoking you. a joint, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> die he just says yeah. like a really like cheesy die like, die die <laughs> yeah. yeah exactly it just has to be done tastefully right um, but I yeah I don't have anything against it I'm not one of those boys who's just like you shouldn't have a face <laughs> well everyone <laughs> has a face guys like, yeah yeah that's the around. twist <laughs> it just takes it off and it's just skin it's just flat skin oh he doesn't have a face wow <laughs> it's like well okay Thanks, Chief. Put your helmet back on, please. <laughs> please put it back yeah, on. Never take it off. This is horrible. Um, yeah, and I think, you know, the reactions I've really seen to this is pretty much what I'd expect. It's sort of dividing most people into two camps, as always. 
you know, the group of people that are like, yep, yeah, cool, makes sense. And the other people that are like, this isn't exactly like Halo comic 113. And that means that it's going to be shit. You know, Chief has a the shader number 23 of blue. And if they aren't that exactly, I'm, I'm going to bomb someone. <laughs> yeah, just someone. Someone. I'm just going to random IP address, random... <laughs> Pull a postcode. Yeah, postcode <laughs> lottery. <getting> <laughs> oh, Jesus. Someone has to pay for this. <laughs> yeah. Man, people are just so weird. I have, do you know what? Because Horizon's been out and I managed like the Twitter account, I have just been absolutely like at the end of my fucking tether this week, like looking at just people like reacting to Horizon Forbidden West and dumbass like xbox kids just being pricks for no reason and then like oh, yeah. dumbass playstation idiots just being like just stupid over like nothing like that you know we spoke about the whole metacritic score it's it since dropped down from an 89 to an 88 um oh my god and like people are losing oh my god right and people are like losing That's their insane. shit over it no 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 that is a really like... big deal oh, pretty big deal I, I, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a bad, bad game <laughs> it's trash it dude yeah absolutely uh man it's just it's been an, just <laughs> just sickening like honestly it's like how do you think this way you have mashed potato for a brain it's kind of horrible to think and it kind of makes you think that everything we're excited for is going to get the same fucking exactly as well. it's like, like starfield and redfall yeah. and all these games are just going to get fucking bombed for like the smallest thing and it, it everyone just backs them up like it's so personal to them <laughs> it's like it's like their family made this game and it's like well chill out chill out bro you yeah. just spent 60 quid on it like that's all you did it's like, so weird calm calm those tits of yours yeah I, I muted my first person ever actually because I just couldn't. I couldn't be bothered opening oh, really? Twitter every day. Yeah, I, I, I just opening every day and just seeing like you know zoomed in shots of Halo versus do, zoomed in shots of like Horizon or just you know shit like that like over and over again and then just back and forth arguments of like like people would take screenshots of all oh, what what people have said and being like. 87 what a shit score and then people like xbox twats will post back and be like 88 ha 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 by your own admission this must be a bad game and it's like yeah like you said that that's the thing that always be the most it's like do you not get that like you're just this is just gonna come back in circles yeah. like yeah i just don't get what they what they get out of it like so when they really send that tweet are they like oh, man that felt good <laughs> like Actually, just sitting there hitting, hitting refresh, just waiting for the response. <laughs> like, I got that kid good. I got that 12 year old real good. I've always got Man. my back pocket go back to Fortnite. Yeah. Yeah. And then, like, people have been like review bombing, like, it on Metacritic as well. Just like what happened with Halo. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, there's wow. always people who just go on it. Zero out of 10. Just for, just for like no reason. Yeah. It's just, I don't know. And it's just no point comparing. Like, you shouldn't compare ever something like Halo to Horizon. But they couldn't be any more different games. Like, showing a zoomed in picture of a resolution thing on Halo and Horizon, it's like, sure, Horizon will win. Horizon is a stunning, stunningly look- looking game. Like, Halo looks great as well. But, like, they're so different. I mean, <laughs> one's a fucking shooter, the other's a single player RPG. Like yeah, I don't know. It's just so well. Besides anything else, like Horizon, like you know, this is the thing. Like this is the thing with the whole like list wars and like you know pixel zooming and like selective screenshots and and clips. Yeah, like it totally just to, like ignores art style, and I get that's what I find most annoying about it. Like from a technical standpoint, we can we can look at that and, and you know agree that there's some level of objectivity, but like. There's no point zooming in on a pile of leaves in Horizon and then a pile of leaves in Halo or any game because it's like Horizon and a lot of Sony's games are like very hyper hyper realism. Like that's their thing. I can't really think of mm-hmm. any of their games really which have like a particular styling to them. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just that that's what they go for and they look great as a result. They look amazing as a result. You know, it'd be like yeah. comparing it to like the water in because like we were watching. Um, I was watching some of the digital foundry stuff on Forbidden West, um, and the water looks like oh my god, like so good. It's like 
and you know it, it's the, it's the only thing I've ever seen come close or like being in competition to Sea of Thieves, which is obviously very different because Sea of Thieves is so stylized and it's like you know the yeah. physics with it and the way it looks. It's whereas Horizon is because it's very realistic. You can like see through it and like how the water reflects through it. So it's just pointless for me to say one is better than the other. And this is the thing with Halo. Everybody knows Halo's thing is like simple, clean look. Like that's how it's meant to be. So it's just yeah. like that comparison is pointless. And it's just, yeah, you know what I mean? And it's just like how with when Halo came out, people would play the game, like trying to break it, clip it, share it to Twitter and be like, oh, it's so buggy. And like that now Team Xbox is doing the same thing. And it's just like, can we just not? It's just been exhausting, yeah, man. Right. It's been exhausting to be on Twitter this week. It's like, man, this game looks great. And then I scroll up like twice and it's like, this is the buggiest game I've ever played. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I don't get it. I mean, I guess we're just in that different breed of gamer. Maybe we're just slightly older and just a bit more accepting to it. But yeah, when Horizon, Horizon came language. out and I watched all the gameplay of it and I saw the reviews, I was literally just like, snaps dude like well played like it's a great game it's fucking awesome. i wasn't <laughs> i wasn't fucking busting out my keyboard and nuts all over the screen <laughs> just like just trashing it i yeah. just don't i don't understand yeah and, like i know fun. grown-ass men do this as well i know it's not just 16 year olds like that's the worst thing there, there are people who like sit down with youtube channels and make like 15 minute videos and open it and they're like What's going on, guys? Today, we're going to talk about how Xbox is utter trash. There's no games on Xbox, and Sony cannot take an L. And, like, that that's actually, like, what they're... And, it's, and they're, like, older than us. These are, like, guys in their 30s, and I'm like... Yeah. Please, <laughs> spare Shit, me like the embarrassment. Crying in the background. <laughs> spare Please. me the second-hand yeah. embarrassment. Yeah. That's pretty cringe, dude. Yeah, it's just I, I, it's it's more it it's just this week I've been more annoyed at like people who are meant to be like like you know fans of Xbox just being like pricks and it's like this is just gonna like if you can't if you're just gonna be this like nitpicky over a game this good like expect it fully to come back round when red you know uh, Redfall and Starfield and Forza Horizon come out because you're just inviting yeah. it like exactly. Break the cycle, man. Do better than that. <laughs> cycle is too deep, dude. You <laughs> it's can't so break deep. this cycle. It's you can't do it. Like you, you can go through my my Twitter history and like I've been responding to more people. I mean, I'm making it sound like it's all I've done this week. I, I obviously have worked, but like you know, I, there's been a couple of times where I've seen people uh, who have like been trying to pick her eyes apart and are like you know typical Xbox uh, fanboy posters or whatever. And I've been like, come on, there's no, like, there's really no need for this. Um, yeah, silly stuff. Silly fucking yeah. stuff. <laughs> it's weird. It's so weird. Anywho, uh, what's happening next? Um, okay, so I mean, we kind of moved away from TV, but we're back onto it for a little bit. Um, a Netflix Bioshock TV show got announced this week. It's cool. That was, came out of nowhere. Did we already know that? I didn't know that. I didn't. I feel like I've heard it before. It didn't seem like such a surprise to me when I read it. It's been um, yeah, but I feel like I've heard it before. But it's it's been dead for a while. Like I haven't heard it for a long time. If I have, yeah. um, it's pretty cool, man. You know, if it's done well, Bioshock, and like if you capture Rapture properly in the atmosphere and stuff like that, mm. like that could be really, really good on on the TV screen. Like, um, like really good. <clears throat> um so yeah i hope they kind of do it well um i'm a big fan of bioshock i i, I didn't play bioshock too much but i loved the first bioshock and i i, I really liked bioshock infinite mm. unpopular opinion i don't care <laughs> bioshock infinite was fucking great um there are some people who just like you shouldn't carry the name. It's not even Bioshock. Where's the water? Like, Fuck <laughs> off. There's water in clouds, actually. So yeah, <coughs> yeah exactly. Yeah, um, I'm with you, man. And so, I can, yeah. I, I just missed um, like Bioshock's like you know emergence. And I, I, I think I've said on the show before. I've tried to go back to it, um, like the enhanced edition or the trilogy, whatever it was. And man, I just, I just couldn't get into the first one. I don't know what it was. I don't know why. I just, I feel like the like design of the levels is just really hasn't aged well. 
Um, okay, I actually found quite the opposite. I I, I, I boot I booted up the collection and I kind of sunk in a few hours. Kind of flew by like that. Like, I actually quite liked it. Um, I mean, I, I got. I, I, I got I play, I played it for a bit. I probably put like seven or eight hours in and I got to this part where I'm just like in a room and it's just like full of big daddies and like I don't have the skills to like move past them. Uh I don't know, it just I didn't it, it just wasn't clicking with me. Like I, I, I love like the atmosphere was great. Um I don't know, man. I for me it didn't feel like it had aged well. But I know I know that's probably not popular. Hmm. Yeah. No, I, yeah, I mean I think just between me and you, we actually had quite different experiences because I thought it still held up pretty well. Not 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 amazingly. Don't get me wrong. I still noticed it was an old an old game, um, but I did quite like it. It was good. Um, but yeah, mm. I mean, a TV show could be pretty fucking hype on that. Um, but I don't know. Translation from video game to TV screen isn't always perfect. I mean, Witcher has done it well, I guess. Um. Yeah, and I think that's kind of as far as series go. Are there any other video game series? Uh, Arcane, I guess, was the other one that just came out. Yeah, that's what I was really thinking. Well. But I mean, it's 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 animated. But yeah, I guess I guess you could say that. Um, and yeah, that was fucking ace. Um, yeah, I haven't yeah, seen I heard that. that was like, yeah, I heard that was like a masterpiece. I mean, even my brother, who doesn't even know what League of Legends is, watched it and he came up to me and he was just like, "You seen Arcane?" I was like, no, and he was like, shit's so fucking good. <laughs> he was like, it was, it actually blew my mind. And he, wow. he's, he's never even heard of League of Legends or anything. Wow. So, yeah, cool. pretty high praise. Yeah, that is pretty high praise. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess, I mean, well, while we're, while we're on the topic, I suppose, Un- Uncharted came out like this week, didn't it? Or maybe that was last week, the movie. Uh, yeah, this week or last week, yeah. Um, <coughs> Oh, take a... <laughs> um, poor man it, again it was a bit you know it's a bit mediocre like i i, I heard it's a little bit of fun and it's like you know but there's some fan service in there and stuff like that but for the most part it's a pretty it's a pretty not great movie yeah it, it didn't critically do too well did i think it's sitting at like 40 something on on metacritic at the moment um yeah. But commercially, I've heard it has actually been pretty successful. And I think, you know, I guess this is why companies keep trying to make these, because as the gaming market grows and grows and grows, they know there's a safety net of people who are going to watch these films, you know, regardless of the, of the, uh, like, critic score, at least while we're in this honeymoon phase of, like, oh, the, you know, my favorite game series is going to be a movie. Yeah. You know, maybe in 10, 20 years' time when it's, like, quite commonplace that won't be the case yeah. anymore but for now i think that i guess that's why they keep trying because they're like we'll probably make returns on investment just because yeah people yeah, like people this game like take a pun on it yeah yeah so the x many people played this game you know let's say 50 percent of them watch this movie that's already like you know good returns i'm i'm the opposite though like i uh, i still not watch monster hunter i can't i i just can't i can't bring myself to do it have you seen monster no. hunter no not yeah. gonna watch it. it doesn't exist like they didn't it's, make it's it been brought up a few times and people are like, oh, Monster Hunter. They're like, Tim, you like Monster Hunter. You want to watch this? And I'm just like, get it. Fuck off. Get it off, off <laughs> my fucking TV right now. I, I'm not I'm not watching it. It's just going to ruin it. It's just going to ruin everything. Why did they have to try like, why they made did it they real have to world. go through a portal? <laughs> yeah, why did they just send military with assault rifles <laughs> through a portal? You could have just made it in the Monster Hunter world with swords and hammers and stuff like what's wrong with that i mean there need to be a swat team shooting a diablo (laughs) why (laughs) it's like (laughs) smoked him (laughs) yeah god this is cool you see me just empty a clip into that fucking great (laughs) jagras it's fucking so trash (laughs) just so weird i guess they must have thought at some point oh the characters won't be able to like connect if it's like in a fictional world like imagine if at the beginning of star wars or like lord of the rings it was just like the modern timeline and then we portal into onto like fucking tatooine or into middle earth like what why (laughs) arrogant's just like a regular dude (laughs) he just gets transported in they give him a sword and they're like you're a king he's like ah wow fish out of water 
yeah, it's just I just don't understand it. It's just just make it its own world. Just give it its own thing. Like just make it native. Just like like the fucking blue people in Avatar. Like just yeah, just do it like that. Yeah, like you don't need to. I don't know. Anyway, I don't want to talk about it. It triggers me. I know it's weird. I, 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 I will guess... never watch that movie. <laughs> that's that's my solemn vow to you, yeah. the viewer. <laughs> Um, yeah, I guess Joe you know actually just reminded me um, because uh, the other two that we forgot to mention, which probably do deserve a mention, is um, the fucking Pokemon one and Sonic. Right? I haven't seen them, but apparently you know they're actually kind of both respectful. actually pretty good. Sonic, I actually had quite a lot of fun watching. Um, they kind of nailed the character, and that's just because he's just goofy and fucking stupid. Yeah. So he actually translates quite well into that sort of. He's like a PG Deadpool. Um, right. <laughs> okay. And. Um, yeah, it was actually it? pretty good. That'd be what, such a PG. Funny, dude. They can make have one swear word. That'd be great. Just one time, oh, yeah, somebody's yeah. like, "I've got to go fucking fast." <laughs> <laughs> Just drops an F bomb out of nowhere. <laughs> it was like Sonic, Sonic. Um, yeah. but no, it was actually pretty good. I actually had quite a lot of fun watching that. And um, genuinely, might might actually watch the second one in the cinema. Um, and uh, what was the other one you said? The oh, uh, Detective Pikachu. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Fucking I watched Ryan that. Reynolds. Reynolds. <laughs> Pikachu. Yeah. It was just Ryan Reynolds again. He he just always plays himself. Um, <laughs> yeah. And uh, that was okay. And I got a sneeze. So. Oh, man's got a sneeze. Yeah. Oh. Um. Yeah. That that was okay. That that was worse than like the likes of like Sonic and stuff like that. It was a six out of ten movie. It wasn't bad, but it wasn't great. But yeah, they're definitely um, they're getting better at video game movies, and um, I think they've they've noticed the ones that don't take themselves as seriously translate better into movies, mm. rather than the likes of Assassin's Creed and Monster Hunter and all that. Yeah, that end up just being trash tier garbage fires. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know where the the, the future of like transmedia is is going to go but you know it's clear it's clear it's what the market no well not the market it's clear that um that's what the the businesses want to do that they see a gap there um and like we said you know they still make money i'm i'm sure the monster hunter one didn't because it's not big enough here to like i don't think maybe they yeah maybe they just overestimated that safety net like we were talking about maybe they're like monster hunter world was really big but it's like not it's like you know it's not quite as safe as something like pokemon or sonic um yeah yeah but then yeah because we like we know there's so many other things in development like we know there's the last of us 2 not last of us two just the last of a show which is i think being pushed back to 2023 now um we know there's like there's like isn't there like something gears of war related happening as well there's borderlands 2 yeah yeah borderlands the movie I think that might be the worst one yet. It's going to be shit. It's going to be so shit. I think I, I actually think that might, I that might be another one to add to the never watch list with Monsanto. Yeah, I I've got to agree. I and we haven't even seen anything about it. And the reason, because you know, a lot of the reason people say like, oh, video game movies are so shit is because it like it takes away the whole thing that makes games good in terms of storytelling. And it's like you can interact with the characters and you can like your choices have consequences. And it's like. Nobody plays Borderlands for the story. Borderlands 2 had a good story. 1 and 3 didn't. And I wouldn't, like, I wouldn't just play Borderlands 2 for the story still. Like, you know, yeah. it's I whole... Mean, Borderlands 2, it didn't have a good story. Its story was just big monster in vault, swallows world. That's that's literally all it was. The yeah. villain was good in Borderlands 2. That, that was it. Like, he was just well written. He had a good script and stuff like that, like Handsome Jack. But the actual story was very basic i think i think it was good it had a, had a couple of good beats throughout i mean as you met the new characters and it brought the new vault the old vault hunters back into it um i thought it was good and then like bloodhound head pops off and all the rest oh yeah actually that's true i forgot about that but also you said bloodhound not bloodwing did i oh god <laughs> bloodwing <laughs> bloodhound's head pops off. <laughs> that'd be the crossover we all need um yeah, there are a couple of other things like that. I, I, I agree. Um, yeah, Handsome Jack was the, the the star of the show, but um, I, overall, I think most people would agree the story was pretty good. Uh, but still, you don't yeah. come to Borderlands for the story. Uh, like no. the world building is quite cool as well in Borderlands, but it's like it's. I don't think it's diverse enough. Like we've kind of already treaded that ground. You know, it's like 
Uh, it's a wasteland. This whole thing's this whole thing is like RNG, like wacky weapons and stuff. Right? right. How the fuck is that going to translate into exactly. a movie? Like, what the fucking fuck? They're just all going to be using assault rifles. Don't fucking tell me yeah. anything different. I or know it's one CGI, yeah. CGI ass like rocket launcher or something. <laughs> that, I don't know. I think there will. I think there'll be like one or two scenes where they actually like open a chest and like find a weird weapon. And Kevin Hart as Roland is like, "This is fucking crazy!" And I'm like, "Oh, yeah. make it end!" <laughs> yeah. You know, and it has like a giant mag on it, and it's like, "This is not the same thing as finding a gun in a game." Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's just, I just don't. Mate, uh, I don't know. I I I kind of feel like it's it'll be worth watching just to pick apart because I just if I had to pick any video game to make a movie of, I think Borderlands would be very 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 far down my list. It just doesn't work. Yeah, it just no, absolutely does not work. And it's and you know what? I think there there would be an opportunity for it because like like let's not forget there have been Borderlands spinoffs, Tales from the Borderlands, um critically received really well i played through it i thought it was really good i think it was like an eight you know i think i gave it an eight um it was great you know and it, it, it skirted around like th- like new characters and like the universe and there were some cool stories to be told there but that's not what they're doing they're taking existing characters and they're like making borderlands from the looks of it like borderlands one the movie you know that I, at least i think you know it's not if they had just if it had just been like a splinter like side story, like like with new characters, I think there was probably space for that, you know. But they they want to use the brand recognition yeah. to draw people in, so it's a bit of a catch twenty two where like you have you know that just what doesn't seem to be the same thing. But even then, Tales from the Borderlands was built on like you know it's a tell yeah telltale game, so it's like you know picking decisions and the consequences yeah. of your actions yeah. and stuff like that. So which one? yeah. I, I'm just interested to see some of Brick's lines in like, the Borderlands movie. I think he's gonna have such cringy shit lines. Yeah, and just yeah. be like, it would just be like the classic thing where I'll be like, Brick, go right, and he would be like, ha ha ha, yeah. And then, oh god, it will be like, it will be like Drax, but you know. <laughs> yeah, it's just not done. Properly. But broccoli. <laughs> yeah, because with Drax it kind of works, but I, I don't know. Oh god, well, Drax is Drax uh, is just wit- written well, and he's a good um, he's like good comedy relief for the rest of the crew. But uh, Brit, and it's it's not in your face. It's not all the time as well with Drax. Exactly. It's like little background moments every now and again. Whereas like Borderlands uh, is like dark comedy, like the whole game is comedy, and Brick is yeah. just one thread of that, you know. Um, so yeah, man, I, I'm not holding my breath for that one, dude, or I will yeah. suffocate. <laughs> I think I might hold my breath and kill myself. <laughs> Jesus. All right. Well, hopefully they don't release anything before Elden Ring comes out or that'll be the end of you. Mm-hmm. All right. Next up, um, just a small thing, really, but there was a new Splinter Studio announced. Uh, another one that popped up, by the way. Um, we spoke about this a couple of weeks back and how that kind of pertains to everybody's perception of a monopoly when there's like 5,000 studios popping up every week. Um, from CD Projekt Red. And they're called Rebel Wolves. And that is a cool name. That's a very that cool name. Yeah. Um, yeah. And according to their own page, their own description, uh, they're currently working on a AAA story-driven rpg saga for pcs and next-gen consoles um okay with more to share soon cool cool <laughs> i mean cool a full work. studio could make cyberpunk but sure let's see what they can do with a splinter group doing a triple a title i think i think this is um i think it's really cool that we are seeing like a lot of like is this is like you know you know what I mean when I'm saying this is happening a lot at the moment. A lot of people are like stepping out and making their own dev studios. I think this is, yeah, it, it's great. I think creatively because it like you know makes more competition and like there is like this big, uh, thriving indie scene. Um, but the only thing that does scare me about this is that they're going to need money, and how are these indie devs going to get money? They're going to make deals with big publishers, 
And what will happen if those mm-hmm. deals are big publishers? They'll make games exclusive. <laughs> and that's yeah, frightening to me. Good. You know, um, yeah. whether that's locked down by Nintendo um, or it's a PlayStation thing or, God forbid, Stadia, you know, or Xbox. That's whatever. dead, isn't it? Stadia. It's still kicking. They shut down the Google Studios, oh. but the, the actual platform is still going. Oh, okay. I thought they just canned it all. No, nah, their first party studios have gone. I'm saying with Amazon, I think. God, there wasn't that pathetic. Wasn't that a pathetic attempt from Google and Amazon? Yeah, it really was, considering they're like the biggest companies in the world. Yeah. It's just such a pitiful effort. They were like, here's our new platform. We've got all of these companies making games. Oh, it didn't work. It close them all. <laughs> yeah. Like, it didn't work for three months. We didn't make yeah. insane turnover for the first three months. So we're what out. The fuck? It's been a hell of a ride, guys. <laughs> so weird really? yeah like come on you need to try more than that and like because it was um yeah it was after the i think it was amazon it was after the bethesda acquisition that amazon were like nah <laughs> we ain't doing that <laughs> get me out yeah um i can't remember when it happened with google i'm, I'm pretty sure that's right i'm pretty sure they've shut down their first party studios but maybe someone can correct me if i'm if i'm wrong um but lost ark no, as well Lost Ark as well was published by Amazon Games um, in collaboration with Smilegate. So like they've had a couple of big good successes now. Um, Lost Ark and what's mm. that one that came out a couple of months back? The MMO that was really successful. Uh, new MMO. Amazon. Oh, Valheim. No, not Valheim. No, that was an indie game. New World. Mm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, so Amazon now, um, like those studios are, they're looking to like sell them off, I think, or are winding them down. Don't know what it is, but they've had like two pretty decent successes with these games now, and it's like, guys, just stick to your guns for a bit. Like, like read the room. Like everyone else has taken a long time to get where they are now. You know, look at what Xbox is doing. They're pumping a lot of money to do what they're doing. Um, expect some games to not do as well as you thought they were going to. You know. Yeah, exactly. You've got to be in the race a little bit longer to uh, right. see any results. It's a bit weird. And like, I don't know. Yeah, like, I don't know because I think it would have been, like, there is some future out there where, like, Google and Amazon, like, genuinely compete and it, like, really skyrockets, you know, the market forward in terms of technology and game output. You know, there mm. is a future because that competition has been it definitely hasn't been stagnant but it's become very like predictable in terms of like nintendo do their own thing and xbox and usually they get the most sales and then nintendo and uh sorry xbox and playstation fight over like the same segment of gamers um and obviously there has been shake-ups in terms of xbox trying to expand outwards with x cloud and whatever else they're doing and game pass and but you know <laughs> in a world where like stadia succeeded and they had a handful of exclusives and amazon put out their own like box and they've got like a handful of exclusives as well like we could see like some real you know like uh space race shit <laughs> you know xbox is like handing out small jets to everyone to like play the next game you know so yeah it's a bit of a shame on one oh, hand man. but yeah i'm waiting for it i'm waiting for the day i get a jet for my pre-order that'd be great yeah complimentary <laughs> complimentary jet <laughs> yeah. bill is literally like what have you done <laughs> <laughs> Where is my money going? None of these people have licenses. They're all <laughs> flying around. The skies are in disarray. Yeah. So many dead. <laughs> you didn't think this through, did you, Satya? Uh, Giving everyone jets. <laughs> Jesus. We thought they wouldn't fly them. Come on. <laughs> yeah, where are they going to park them? God. Anyway, <laughs> um, next, uh, EA put out a statement, and there's been a bit of back and forth on this. Did you see anything about this? EA kind of like partly blamed Halo for uh, Battlefield's like poor Fuck launch. off. Fuck <laughs> off. Mm. Battlefield launched poorly because it was a fucking trash game. It literally just didn't work from the ground up. It was so buggy. It was so, so buggy. It was so buggy. It was it was one of the most unpolished games I played from a lo- in a long time from a AAA studio. Like, yeah. oh my god, it was just not okay. 
Do you remember when we played the whatever it was, the alpha or the beta or whatever, the demo, whatever, and it people better. would people would parachute down into mm. the ground and then shoot mm. you through the concrete. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or they just like went through the ground and you were like, okay, well that's done. And you just saw them to like pop back up and then shoot you. And you were like, yeah. okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, that, that shit ran better than the actual game launch. I remember having more fun on that beta than um than the 24 hour early access or 48 hour early access they gave you. Well, it's because um, there was, there was like a spark of hope in the, in the beta, wasn't there? It's like, well, you know, this is yeah. like, there's a good game under this somewhere. And yeah. then it was like exactly the same, if not worse, on launch day. And you're like, oh, no. It was just, oh, my God. I mean, it, I think that's the first time I've ever been in a party of like four friends all booted up the game with this early access thing, EA Play. Um, the full release, by the way, not talking beta. And, uh, we all came out. I didn't pre-order, but everyone else came out and cancelled their pre-orders. That is the mm. first time that's ever happened to me. Three people just like we didn't see like this. I'm not paying money for this. Game. <laughs> like it's it's awful. Um, yeah, it's so bad, man. And I, it was just because of a troubled development. Like I heard they wanted to take it in so many different ways, and they like scrapped it from like the ground up so many times. It was initially built to apparently just be a VR only game. I heard. And then they were just like, oh, no, mm. we need to keep it Battlefield. We need to make it normal Battlefield. So then they, like, canned all that back to square one and built it, like, as a Battlefield game. And I don't know, man. Yeah. They but just... like you, you look at the early advertising for it versus what we got. You know, it's clear they didn't have enough time or features were just straight cut because, like, the whole environment thing, you know, the weather systems, they were like, oh, so much can happen. And it was just tornadoes. Yeah, just tornadoes. Yeah. Like in in some of the things, there was like a tsunami that would come through, or like a sandstorm. Um, yeah, you know, like yeah. loads of stuff. But it was just tornadoes. Yeah, it's just tornadoes, <laughs> and it was like it'll come later. But it's just like how much later? Like people can't. This play is a full game. price game. You, 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 like, yeah, you, it's a full price game, and you also first need to fucking fix it before you start adding tsunamis. Like, let's be real. Um, yeah, and it's just. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know, man. It was just, it was just so, so, so bad. An absolute um, nightmare. Yeah, <clears throat> there, there is absolutely nothing on Halo here. It's just a bad game. That game yep. could have released any fucking any day of the year, and it would have received the exact same reception as it did. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, um, you know, just just to add a, add a little bit of context here because I, I do think to to a certain degree some of this is sensationalized just to, you know to make a headline but this was like one of the things that we said in like a i can't remember the exact word for it but it was like you know like a shareholder statement or whatever so it wasn't for the public um and you know they essentially said you know by comparison halo infinite made us look very very bad because um you know, it, it came out of nowhere, basically, because they shadow dropped it, didn't they? Um, and apparently some yeah. partners were actually pretty upset about that because, you know, Battlefield worked with, do work with Xbox and they had like a marketing agreement and obviously EA players in Games Pass. And then they shadow dropped Halo, which clearly they didn't know about. And Halo looked good, which is like still not, like, it's not, it's not Xbox's problem. <laughs> you know, if, you, if your game looked good, then we would have had this problem. But, you know, that that's kind of the additional context that like they were just saying, you know, alongside the other things they did say like features weren't ready you know um performance wasn't to play expectations and you know it launched alongside Taylo, which was very polished by comparison um yeah but it's been a funny back and forth because like there's just been they, they, they've just like mildly mishandled <laughs> kind of these statements because ea then went on the record and were like no we're denying that we said this and it's like you got to deny your own statements. Like we, it's right there. I can see it, like with my own eyes. <laughs> it's, it's it's just so weird. It's um, just a, just a bit of bad PR management around that. But yeah, not. Good. I heard they. Uh, I heard they might be making it free to play soon. Um, Battlefield. I heard there's rumors they might do that. Makes sense. Um, as a you know, as a way to just start bucketing some water over this massive fire. Yeah. Um, you know yeah absolutely I, I think it's, I, I mean it's one of the things we spoke about a few times before it came out like you know how how well do full price multiplayer only games fare these days you know it, 
I think they could. St- I think there's still a space, and they can fare well, but not when they're made like that and released I, like that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think. But it was just a big ask. Like I, li- I literally can't think of the last game that was multiplayer only, like full priced. Um, maybe Titanfall One. Overwatch was um, not full price. Yeah. Um. Was was Overwatch not full price? No, it was, no, it was half price. It was, it was thirty quid for us. And Titan um, for One didn't have a campaign, did it? No, I think it did. What did it have? I think it did have it maybe like something. a single player mode, but it was like it yeah. was just multiplayer with like um, the slip screens bots. and some story, yeah, some exposition over the top, um, and mm. bots, yeah, um, yeah. Like I literally can't think of one. I'm, I'm sure there's one I'm missing. Obviously, like Call of Duty, it was probably the last Battlefield. To be honest, it was probably. Uh, but what even about those had Battle like Battle Front. Oh, Star Wars. Uh, no, they yeah. had a single player. That did have a single player, did it? Yeah, and it had quite, quite a few different modes as well. There was like a co-op mode. Um, okay. It's probably, yeah, it was probably the last... But did the last Battlefield have like... Didn't the last Battlefield 1, was it? Had um, like single player episodes in it where you like played through different people's perspectives. Mm, yeah, but no, that, that was still done as like a multiplayer mode, I think. They just told these battles through like the eyes of whatever soldier or whatever side you were playing, but it was still a multiplayer right. match. Right. So yeah, it probably was just that. Film. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, it's just a ballsy play because especially you know, especially in the last three years since things like, well, I know Fortnite's been around longer, but you know things like Apex, things like now Halo. Um, and Valorant, for example, you know, whatever. All those big things are now free to play. And it's just like, you know, I remember when Halo was first announced as free to play and we were like, oh, that's kind of peculiar. But in the years, like coming up to it, you're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> like that makes, like, makes sense why they did that. Yeah. Um, because it just, you know, I know people go back and forth on like the monetization model and whether they like it or not. And, you know, um, regardless, it makes no difference to the health of the game really does you know depend like it just it just wouldn't i just don't like even if they had released it at full price and there was like the customization was more like in line with like classic or legacy halo it wouldn't have had nearly as many players that mo- a lot of people would not have picked this up um even after the positive reception i think at launch i think some people all have hung around and be like oh actually we need to wait a bit longer for a bit more you know so mm. you know whatever it's hard to say but um yeah it's just free to play is seems to be the way the market's going for the moment yeah <clears throat> okay definitely right while um while we're on the topic of halo um there was uh we were waiting for a big old um uh blog really from 343 about the the mid february update and there's been quite a few updates recently they did some work on like geo filtering and and a big explanation and like desync and obviously fixed btb in the last few weeks um supposedly this was like a big a big february update um and honestly it is a bit underwhelming yeah i can't blame people for feeling underwhelmed here i am as well i was expecting kind of the maybe the first few um balance changes and stuff um and they said there's going to be more notes to come um like when the when it actually comes out like to, to, to quote uh that's just a taste of the improvements landing next week with the update so maybe this isn't the full thing but what unishek community uh community lead has um said is being targeted is firstly um they're looking more into networking and looking at latency and desync and they're putting in tools to give them more information on on the desync it should be a little bit better than it was before because they've done some work on the geo filtering um they should be get, gathering more information on that if it continues to be a problem and, and have tools to be able to sort of, you know, the, the, the telemetry for that to, to fix it. Mm. That's the first thing. The second thing was first person animation. So you know how, I, I've noted this before, you know how sometimes there's like climbing animations or particular guns are like running at half frames. Like the skewer was always a big one. Yeah, That's, they're like, ah, uh, yeah, that's going to be a fix. That's not intentional. Um, which is good to hear because I actually thought it, it, were, it was like a compromise for the performance. Um, yeah. Know, um, so I'm glad that's not the case, and it's just a bug. Um, <clears throat> there are some campaign improvements coming. Um, they've said 
uh, returning to game via quick resume, achievements unlocking, and except so some more stuff as well. Um, again, more patch notes next week on that, um, and some more stuff around stability and performance. They've they've said too. Um, that's it in terms of like the quality of life stuff. Um, the first like big balance change that they've said they're going to be making is making the range of the motion tracker bigger in Big Team Battle, which they said was something that they were going to be targeting um, after the, the final tech test um, back in, like, when was it? October or wherever it was. Um, yeah. And there was loads of things they said they were going to be trying to change from that. I think vehicles was another one, so that's got to be on the agenda somewhere. But yeah, this is increasing the uh, radar from 18 to 24, which is great um hopefully they will have a look at that still for arena um i would i wouldn't mind seeing a slight increase in arena i don't think it's necessary but i think maybe it could help with some people's frustrations um yeah and lastly it's a bit uh, some improvements on anti-cheat which is good because i've i, mean, I have not come across many but i've come across maybe two or three in, in my time playing and it's it's always memorable enough to piss you off so <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. Any thoughts? At um, all? Yeah, I mean, like you said, it's it, 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 it's underwhelming in the sense that there's no real sandbox changes like weapon improvements, weapon nerfs. I don't think many actually need nerfing, but um, or just I mean, I wasn't no additionals. I wasn't expecting anything additional to be added, but definitely I was expecting some weapon tweaks and stuff like that. Um, so that's a shame. The motion tracker is probably the biggest thing in there. For me, to be honest, that affects just definitely the, the, the just overall gameplay. You know what what you're always seeing on your screen. Um, it affects everything you're doing. Um, so that's cool. I think B two B does need it. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how that plays. Um, sure. So that's cool. And then obviously, you know, I'm all for just the overall improvements and like general improvements of the game. It's not exciting, but everyone needs it and we do appreciate it but yeah when you when you look at it at face value it's not it's nothing that gets you excited yeah exactly um, really but it's it's all good stuff you know let's be real if you were to dig into it and actually think about it they're all they are all problems um so you know i mean what's your it's just like not exciting what would you need to sort of pick the controller back up for it again out of interest like what would because i think you know, i think you're probably more in line with how the a lot a lot of the casual community is feeling about it you know so what what would you kind of need to say oh yeah i'll give that a go um is it like a good maps, question or is it or is it something smaller would, like balance changes would that be enough to have you pick it up or a new event i would like, definitely say maps um maps and maybe a couple of game modes hmm. like if they were to just drop like invasion or something like that i'd 100 come back um i want to say maybe something to chain uh to chase as well yeah. like outside of just like a, a one item weekly reward that takes quite a while to get um so would you raise an um, eyebrow at, at, and like a new event like one we haven't seen yet yeah I'd say so, yeah. Yeah. So I'd say a couple of new maps, some game modes, and then, yeah, obviously some sandbox changes would be nice as well if they were to make some, you know, considerable improvements to some of the guns that I feel like they need to. Um, I think I'd come back to at least try them out. Um, yeah. I mean, it, it wouldn't take much, in all honesty. Like, I love Halo Infinite. Um, it's just there's more going on in other shooters that i like at the moment so that's that's basically it yeah okay yeah that's interesting um yeah it, it, i think it's, it's interesting just gauging like what people would need because um you know besides the obvious of like a season two with like a new battle pass you know like what would you realistically hope to see between then and now like i think there's a new event coming up at the beginning of march obviously 10 rise around and that's fine you know but it, it's hardly like fresh and exciting at this point um especially because it's just like it's fiesta <laughs> so we already have fiesta um right. and you know then there's like we had for the tactical or whatever it was what was it called cyber ops or something i can't remember the, the event yeah. that just went so attrition yeah. came in and attrition was fun and now it's gone and like i like i would like to understand what the plan is with that like because i would have played attrition a few times 
if it had stayed yeah. and i had, i assume that was the plan in fact i thought that was what they said i thought the idea was to like have an event around it and then leave it stay in the game um mm-hmm. but the flip side of that is now you know like i've just said like with fiesta there was a big at you know backlash like put more playlists in so they added fiesta permanently and now there's like no excitement around fiesta because you can play it whenever you want and you play it when you have challenges so when it comes around you kind of like i've already played it a few times this week like i'm not going to get any kick out of the novelty of fiesta um yeah so I would I would just like to understand kind of what the plan is with that and the introduction of the game modes and we know they're working on a roadmap um, that got delayed out of uh, they said that they plan to have it up before February first so it's it's been pushed back a number of weeks and we don't have any more information on it just yet I imagine we'll hear from it soon but I think that will give give the community a lot more confidence in like what it looks like because you know they have been slow i think like in sort of uh trying to get new content out they've been great in like being responsive and reactive to the community like Mm -hmm. we want the sword to be cheaper okay three weeks boom done we want playlists in two weeks boom done you know uh bt obviously broke along the way and that is a real shame because it was like two steps forward one step back kind of thing um yeah you know so they've been very reactive and responsive in that way but i think it's just that everybody's hungry for more and then it's like bt uh, you know battle pass is too slow adjust that challenges are like this adjust that and then that will go just in and then everyone blasted through the battle pass and once more um which is, which is quite funny because you know we even spoke about that and i think i i just wonder if you know us or our friends would still be playing it if the battle pass had stayed at its original pace or if the challenge system was just unrewarding like inherently and so we would have maybe just not even finished yet like i i don't i don't know but i think it's quite funny yeah, I mean, it's quite hard to say. Um, I know that speaking to our friends now, um, I, I know at least definitely one of them and another one is basically just uh, outright said they never really liked Halo. <laughs> like, even when it came out, they were just like, you know, I played it because everyone else was. But, you know, after going back to like Apex, you know, I I realized it. he was just like, it was actually just really boring. Like, and he didn't even finish the battle pass. He only got like forty levels in. Like he still, he he could still be doing it. Mm. Um, so you know, it does come down to a matter of preference as well, and just whether or not you actually like the game, right? For like sure, likes Halo. Well, yeah, exactly. Um, if that's a thing, that's not going. Nothing's going to keep you in the <laughs> keep you in the game. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. They'll not. I don't think there'll be anything they can do to bring like him back. But um. Yeah, I don't know. For, for for me, it won't take much. Um, the maybe the elimination game mode as well, if that yeah, were to come out, whenever that's due oh, to go. Uh, yeah. yeah, if that was to just come out of nowhere, I'd definitely hop on and give it a go. Um, and I really liked um, uh, attrition. I thought it was a great game mode, and I actually enjoyed my time when I came back to it. Yeah. Um. So yeah, yeah, it doesn't take much. Um. And it's just, this season is just a bit of a drag. It's just too long. You know, we, we've said it so many times. It's just too long. Um, there's only so many times I can go in and just click on Eds and then just leave the lobby and then just requeue to click on Eds and leave the lobby and requeue. Like, you, you, you need to stimulate me a little bit more and give me things as well. Um, you know, there's only there's only so much your, your gameplay can... Uh, can carry you in terms of hours uh and it's carried it a long way for us and it's like, bloody just, good gameplay so yeah, yeah and that's basically solely based on gameplay um so yeah yeah no big big agree big agree um yeah i just i i hope that they um it, it really it, it really seems to me that they're like I think the core was already quite polished, but there were, you know, some issues that became apparent as the longer the game came out, you know, with stuff like a little bit around matchmaking, a little bit around desync, you know, there was some like cheating here and there. And it really seems to me that like, there's like a big priority, polish the shit out of this. And then we can just, cause we don't want to stop <clears throat> adding stuff that like accentuates those problems, um, which makes for like a boring, you know, growth period, like uh, for, uh, first few months. But ultimately yeah. i think i think the view is in their head this is for the long-term health of the game that all of this is polished so that when somebody jumps in in a couple of months time they you know they put the control in their hand and they're like oh my god like this is it feels so good it looks so clean um and look at this roadmap of content that's due to come like that's i think what they want 
Um, so hopefully, you know, we see that roadmap soon and hopefully it's like decent. Like, you know, I'm not going to have unreal expectations, but I'm hoping that there's, you know, they were quite good with Halo 5. That's the thing. A lot of people have been on, like, have, have, like made this comparison, which I didn't realize that Halo 5 was like very quick and very steady with like content output. So it's just a bit, it's a bit, even with what I just said around the prioritization, it's still a bit confusing that it's like, why haven't we had, like, it's been like three months now. Um, mm. There's been nothing. Yeah. Like, there must have been, like, what were you, was there not, like, a, like, usually there's, like, a wind-up period before launch where, so that there's something ready to go, but it just kind of feels like they launched it and were, like, we're starting from zero now, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think it is a case of, you know, they are, uh, it is the first time Halo's done something like this and gone free-to-play model and stuff like that, you know, they are early in their life cycle. They're still trying to figure it out. All the free-to-play games that come out uh, do this as well they just have a period where nothing really much happens and then they start to you know develop a very consistent uh you know we drop content on these dates um you know always two months or three months later um you know maybe a month into the season you get a uh you get a sort of balance change update or something like that and then another month you get the new season you know it's just a case of just figuring that out and i think that's what they're doing i think they're just still at the drawing board um trying to figure out a pattern of how they want to deploy all these things um yeah because i'm sure they've got uh, so many ideas and so many things lined up it's just it's just how they give it like that that is quite important um, cause you can't give it all at once because then it's just, your players just burn out too quick. Um, and you know, you can't do it, feed it too slow because then they'll drop off and go to other games. So it's, it's quite hard to find that sweet spot. And I think that's, that's probably what they're trying to do. Yeah. And while they're mapping all that out, they're just doing quick wins to keep the community happy, like reduce pricing and all that kind of thing. They're just doing these quick little fire wins. Yeah. Um, and you know what? It so... might, it might even be the case that they were just like, we're going to lose players in February. <laughs> Straight up, we're going to lose players in February. Let's just yeah. take this time to like get that polish on and make sure people are leaving or like can come back happy, you know. And when they come yeah. back, it's in a good ship, ship shape. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's an impossible task to, to ask to keep a player all the time, like month month on month, year round. Like it's it's impossible. No game can do that. Um, so it's 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 important and it's healthy to understand that. You know, these things happen and there will be drops and spikes and you know Yeah. That's when you prioritize different things. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, it just it just it just pops into my head then, but like you know it would it would be like because I know a lot of people have asked they just want like a an account level progression system, which I think is fair, that makes sense. Um but like man, imagine if they like added in like like multi team or like team doubles and dropped it with like a map alongside account level. Like I'd be on that. <laughs> I'd be absolutely and like an that. actual combat record as well. I think that would go a long way as well. Like mm-hmm. to actually have a Halo combat record on screen and all my stats and all my badges and compare it with my friends and all that kind of stuff. Like that shit goes a long way as well. Yeah. Um it's not necessarily gameplay, but it's it's something that is important to a lot of people. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So I, I think everybody has like a thing like that that well, like, man, I'd be so excited to play that in Infinite, um, you know, and then you start then you start to get into territory of, like, beyond maps, you know, what about adding a new piece of equipment, or, like, beyond balance trainers, what about adding a new gun, and, like, I think that's the cadence they need to have um, in, in terms of, uh, and, and in terms of setting expectations, you know, what can we expect going forward? Um, because I'd, I'd like to have that penciled in, honestly. I'd like to have that penciled in, like, if they said, even if they were, like, because this, my big worry is that there's actually not going to be any big there's not going to be like any content between now and season two, which is May. Yeah. Um, and I don't, I don't think that's like unreasonable. I think that could very like feasibly happen. I, I feel like they could be just, be the case. Yeah. they're building it up so they can have a big, like not like a new sort of like soft launch with season two, but like all of this is now ironed out. Here's like two or three new maps, a new gun, um, you know, new battle pass, currency in the battle pass, and like a couple of game modes. That's like quite big, and I think would bring a lot of people back in. Um, yeah, so I, I guess they're trying to figure that out as well. You know, like do we drop something in or one three in like maybe April, or do mm. we just save it? You know. Um, so yeah, it's tough, 
tough decision to make. Yeah. No, yeah, I agree. Yeah. Okay. And oh, it's worth mentioning as well that there were some ranked changes being made. They're, they're resetting everyone's rank. Um, like in maybe next week, or maybe it's already happened. Very shortly. Um, and they're changing the way that the ranking like kind of works so it's, it's a bit fairer and the uh, matchmaking okay. on it as well. Nice. All right. Uh, last story for today then. Um, this comes from uh, Xbox Errors. The guys over at Xbox Error. Uh, they had a podcast yesterday um, and they've got some insider information as they always do. Um, and it was reported that allegedly one of the Bethesda ZeniMax studios are working on a real-time strategy game uh, under the total pro- title Project Wormwood. Um, how are we feeling about RTS games these days? I don't know. I've never been... I mean, if we're speaking personally, I've never been encapsulated by a, a, an RTS in particular. I'd say XCOM 1 is probably the most. I've ever been sort of drawn into an RTS, um, not so much too. Um, I don't know. It's it's kind of it's kind of hard to say. Like I don't know how big the community is behind RTS as opposed to other uh, like other genres. Um, I'd say it's one of the lesser genres. Mm. If, if I were to just take a guess in terms of population and hardcore Definitely fans, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but, especially on console, yeah. Especially on console, yeah, yeah. I, I, RTS is definitely sort of seen as a more PC platform um, type of genre for sure. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It's, it's kind of cool. I won't say no to it, right? Well, well, like I mean, this is this is the thing. Um, so I have a couple of things to talk to speak about. First thing, if this is, please God release this on xbox and pc at the same time like i know oh, like, yeah. like we just said you know we know our uh, rts is a more of a pc platform don't pull a gears tactics on me and keep me waiting for a year it worked just fine on console and on controller um take that time build it from the ground up for both platforms um you know that that's what i want to see so there's that number one like just you know the worry that there could be a disparity there again which xbox really needs to get past if they want us to think of these platforms sharing a union the second thing is that the title is possibly elder scrolls related um i don't know why but other that's what other people have said um wormwood um and that's interesting elder scrolls real-time strategy you know like maybe like you know how they did how they had the old battle for middle earth games those are really popular weren't they oh yeah yeah like I wonder, there very well could be something like that in Elder yeah. Scrolls, and like we know, they they've pimped out the Elder Scrolls to quite a few different genres now. Um, you know, over onto mobile and um, with card games, and I'm sure there's something else I can't think of right now as well. Um, I guess it's just MMO versus single player, but yeah, um, I feel like that could be a big possibility, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, although definitely I do feel space for it. Yeah, although I do feel like that kind of removes the possibility of it being like an XCOM type game and means it's more leaning towards like a Age of Empires type game. Yes, yeah. 100%, yeah, with the lack of guns <laughs> and ranged combat and stuff yeah. like that. I mean, you could sort of do it with crossbows and bar and arrows in Magic and stuff like that, you know, yeah. with these percentage range hits and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it can work, um, you know, in the classes. But yeah, I don't know. But it's definitely interesting. Um, again, and I, nice I'd like to see it. Yeah, no, nice sure. variety. Again, you know, we know Xbox are making this push and, you know, the, the fruits of the labours aren't quite there yet. You know, the first party output was good last year. I think, you know, Halo Forza. I suppose it was pretty good, you know, Psychonauts Deathloop. Flight Sim was there as well, so it was pretty good. But um, you know, in terms of the output and the the exclusivity sort of element of it, is is not all there yet. Um, but you know that that variety is good. It's the whole reason Games Pass is there, and as we always say, you know, we'd give it a go for sure. I'd give it a yeah. go. Um, yeah, hundred percent. Makes me think of that Contraband game. I don't know why, because I know that's not like a strategy, but like it's you know, 
sounds a bit weird. <laughs> like, it sounds a bit weird. Um, it's like kind of a yeah. multiplayer. Like, it's meant to be like a shared world kind of, you know, um, I don't want to call shoot like shared world sort of like loot game, but it's like in the 80s where the main, it's about like heists and like, you know, stealing mm-hmm. Like loot and jewels and currency and stuff, but it's plus it's like driving only as well. It's yeah. it's it's not driving only, but like the focus is allegedly the focus is uh what words am I looking for here? Like yeah, like combat. vehicular combat, vehicular combat. Thank you. Yeah, and um, apparently there is like you do there is shooting like allegedly. Um, I think like Jez said that just calling. Uh, so there is like third person shooting, but the focus is vehicular combat, and it's it's like well, how does that work with like a like a four-player co-op like MMO, like how does that even work? So, I'm, yeah. like, I'm just interested to see. That sounds very, very like unique. So I am just interested to see how that kind of works out. Oh yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah, I think that's the first of its kind. Yeah, exactly. So it sounds so so bizarre by concept. Yeah, yeah. My word. Okay. Um, we've kind of reached the end of our news. Um. There is, I guess, as we just kind of like bubbled up on a couple of rumors and like speculation there, I just, I'll close the show up, but just, I just wanted to ask you one thing, you as in Tim, not you as in the audience, sorry. Um, but I mean, you can join in as well. You can maybe type in the comments or tell me what you think. Do we think, does, is there a point where Xbox needs to consider having more shows um, with the amount of studios under their belts? Do, do they need to have this more Nintendo Direct approach or are we perfectly happy with the edging up to E3 and then a big explosion of everything there. I think with the more studios we got, I think it, it, it wouldn't help to have more shows. And like you said, to have a more Nintendo direct sort of thing, because then it just gives, it gives those, those studios their own sort of spotlight, you know, especially ones that are big enough to have their own spotlight and stuff like that. Um, so they're not just like overshadowed or just kind of like put into this overall, package sort of thing like it's good to separate them a little bit obviously still xbox family but like um just give them their own time in the spotlight uh i i do think that is something that that we'll need doing um later Mm. in the in the future especially if you know once we get out to blizz and bethesda and you know it's it will be crazy the, the the amount of games that could be pumped out from both those studios as well as all the other first parties we got yeah so yeah once those are on yeah. full cylinders you would expect just out of sheer like capacity like we need more shows <laughs> yeah yeah plus you just don't want e3 to feel too crammed or too rushed and not giving people enough time to show off yeah. their hard work and these games and stuff like that i think i think we will have more um more um more shows and stuff like that especially with the ones we've done even if it was just like the anniversary event or anything like that you know they they, they went down really well um from the community so yeah you know. and, and they usually make a small appearance at the, at the game awards as well but i just feel like instead of doing this kind of un unfocused kind of you know and that can go there and that can go there it could be like here's quarter one <coughs> xbox direct you know, whatever. Yeah. Brainstorm a couple of yeah. good names. Uh, you know, we're going to focus on what's coming in the next few months. That's what Nintendo does. They're just like, this is what's coming in the first half of the year. And I feel like that, that works well. And, you know, I think it goes hand in hand with like my criticism of like Xbox are never good at showing their own games. <laughs> never. The yeah. the only good time I can think that they like in, in recent memory, like showed off their game really well was with Halo. Um, Cause they did like a game overview trailer. Um, like just by the trailer, I know the game obviously had like a rocky history in, in terms of its reveals and not looking good, yada, yada. But like uh, at the end of last year, where they like did the main marketing for it and they put out that video onto YouTube, um, you know, game it was like a seven minute long video and it covered like everything. You know, we had Jen Taylor doing the the voice over the top. And that's what I want. I want a voice like a voice over, like you know, gameplay overview. Tell me what I can do. Show me what I can do. You know, in in yeah. gameplay. Um, mm. And that was perfect. That was like a perfect trailer for me. It like gave you just a bit of a hint at the story, uh, just like how the the Elden Ring we spoke about earlier. Like that, that's a perf to me. That's like a perfect trailer, and you yeah. could cram maybe Over. two or three, or maybe just two longer versions of them into an Xbox Direct. Done, you know? Yeah, uh, yeah. Because Nintendo Directs aren't very long, are they? They're like 30, 40 minutes, aren't they? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, forty minutes. Yeah, and 
especially you know one of the big things we kept saying after last year's e3 was like oh they you know there's a lot of cgi there and it's fine like the, maybe that's how they want to do it um but like it, it's a bit painful seeing a cgi trailer and it's like i guess we're not going to see this till next year you know exactly yeah yeah or even longer you know like it would be you know i, I just don't think because sometimes I think you lose some of the excitement for a particular game by burying it with everything else. You know, I, I just feel like mm. if they showed off like all the, like, you know, we know there's so much stuff for like, you know, fable gameplay, avow gameplay, contraband gameplay, uh, you know, whatever else is it? hellblade two more Hellblade two, like all of this, you're going to come out and be like, that was bomb. But avowed is like the real thing that sticks in my head. Whereas if they were like, yeah, Xbox Direct happening next week, turn up, we're going to show off avowed and we're going to show off Hellblade 2. You come out of that and you're like, holy shit. Like that's going to stick in your head as like, yeah, two episodic like memories. <laughs> like that was killer. Yeah. yeah. It's just easier to consume. Yeah. Yeah. It's so not that's... overwhelming. Yeah. Yeah. No, I completely agree. Yeah. Good. Well, hopefully they do that. Hopefully they consider that. Like you said, maybe not this year because we're not quite on all cylinders yet, but I imagine if they're looking at 2023's lineup, they must be saying it's going to be a bit of a packed E3. Mm. And, and like, if the thing is, if they step away from that and they just do it in smaller chunks, they don't need to fill it out with CGI trailers. Just hold it close to your chest for a bit longer and show us yeah. next January in, in your Xbox Direct, you know? Show us some gameplay then. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah. All in agreement here. Yeah. Good. All right. Well, uh, if you um, to let us know what you thought about that in the comments, do Xbox need to have just one big showing or a couple of extra showings or maybe a bit of both? Maybe you feel like they need to have still have that big sort of showcase. Uh, let us know what you think. Um, other than that, um, I've been Deck. That's been Tim. And, been Tim. <laughs> and we think. And we'll catch you on the next week. Bye. Bye.